special education in America began with innovators in the field. They focused on sensory motor activities, individualized instruction, and assessment to teach exceptional children. Between the years of 1801 and 1805, Jean-Marc Gaspard Itard taught Victor, the wild boy of Aveyron, a 12-year-old boy reportedly found by hunters who had no language and exhibited animal-like behavior. Because of his work with Victor, Itard was known as the father of special education. He was the first to argue that disabled children could be taught through special methods. Edouard Seguin was Itard's student. He was also one of the first early interventionalists. Another important figure at the time was Reverend Thomas Hopkins Gallouette. He was the founder of the Connecticut Asylum for the Education and, in and Instruction of Deaf and Dumb Persons in Hartford, Connecticut. The school was founded in 1817. All over the world today, we see Montessori schools. These are named for Maria Montessori, who created a child-centered instruction strategy and founded the first Casa del Bambino, a school for orphaned and exceptional children. During the mid-19th century, people with exceptionalities were commonly placed in state schools, sometimes called asylums or hospitals. These establishments were completely self-sufficient and cut off from the outside world. During the time, children with exceptionalities were thought to be unteachable, so there was little instruction in the schools. Although an education during this time in history was a privilege, not a right, many typical peers would have actually quit school to work as young as five. Overcrowding and cost caused most establishments to go from schools to protective care and isolation. Here you see Pennhurst Asylum. It was typical for the time. In the mid-1960s, a reporter by the name of Bill Baldini did an expose on Pennhurst, calling it the shame of Pennsylvania. The conditions were deplorable. Pennhurst was a Chester County institution from 1908 until 1987, when it was finally shut down. In 1975, the federal government stepped in. Legislation was beginning to be written to protect children with exceptionalities. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act, or EAHCA, Public Law 94-142, was put into action. Of course, with legislation comes interpretation and litigation. One important case for special education was the Board of Education v. Rowley. Amy Rowley, who had a cochlear implant, wanted to have interpretation services in all her classes. This case established a broad standard to measure whether the IEP provides an appropriate education. Another important case was the 1984 Irving Independent School District v. Tatro. This case helped define related services, ruling that assistance with a catheter should be included. In Burlington School Committee v. Department of Education, also in 1984, the courts made it clear that if the school district could not provide an appropriate education and the parents place their child in a private school after giving notice, the district is responsible for the cost of that tuition. In 1986, the law was amended to include an infant and toddlers program with public law 99-457. Shortly after that, in 1990, another amendment was added which renamed the law to the Individuals with Disabilities Act, or IDEA. This amendment also added a transition plan for students moving on to post-school lives, and social work and rehabilitation was added to social services. In 1994, the idea of Least Restrictive Environment, or LRE, was born with Sacramento v. Rachel H. The courts identified four factors to determine if placement in the regular classroom was appropriate. Educational benefit, social benefit, the effect of the student on the teacher and peers, and cost. In 1997, the IDEA Act was amended once again, adding several new things to the law. 
Students with disabilities who exhibit less serious infractions of school conduct may be disciplined in ways similar to children without disabilities, including a change in placement, provided that the misbehavior was not a manifestation of the student's disability, according to this amendment. IEPs are also required to state how the student with disabilities will be involved in and the progress in the general education curriculum. Tuition planning now begins at age 14. Reg regular educators become part of the IEP team. Benchmarks and measurable annual goals are emphasized. Assistive technology needs of the student must be considered by the IEP team. Orientation and mobility services for children with visual impairments were added to the definition of related services. States are required to offer mediation services to help resolve disputes. A variety of assessment tools and strategies are to be used in an effort to gather relevant functional and developmental information. And it requires that students with disabilities be included in statewide and district-wide assessment programs or be given asse alternative assessments that meet their unique needs. Of course, there were some important court cases during this time period as well. In Amanda J. V. Clark County School District in 2001, the court ruled that withholding critical information from a parent prohibited parental participation. In 2003, the courts further interpreted the law in Shapiro v. Paradise Valley Unified School District. They determined that an IEP team must contain certain members, a parent for professional knowledge of the child, a special education teacher for professional knowledge of the pedagogy, a regular education teacher for professional knowledge of the content, a specialist for knowledge about assessments, and an administrator for knowledge about the policies and procedures of the school district. Another case of note is Deal v. Hamilton County Board of Education from 2003. This case reminds us to always keep an open mind. The district's refusal to discuss the parent's preferred program at an IEP established that the district predetermined the IEP, a violation that denied FAPE, or Fair and Appropriate Public Education. Finally, some additional changes were made to, the, to IDEA in 2004. This amendment changed the language of IDEA to reflect the No Child Left Behind Act. Also, a three-year IEP was introduced. RTI, or Response to Intervention, was added as part of the Special Education Evaluation. A need for benchmarks or short-term objectives were removed unless the student takes an alternate assessment. Re the requirement for the IQ achievement discrepancy was removed from the determination of sp specific learning disability. Progress monitoring was added based on written measurable goals. The age of transition services was modified to 16, among a few other things. Special education has changed a lot over the last 200 years.